There's nothing like getting stuff done in an enjoyable way. For me, iPads have slowly but surely become a place where that can happen. It's a device I'm actually happy to work on it, whether that be completely or as a companion device, because the things that it does do well, it does better than anything else. With that in mind, I wanted to share with you the apps I use to stay productive and ones that I think are well worth checking out if you're looking to get more stuff done on your iPad. Oh, and if you do like iPad and aesthetic tech content, be sure to subscribe. YouTube loves to keep reminding me that only 12% of you are, so come and join the community. Anyway, let's get right into it. The first app I want to talk about is Pool Suite FM. Okay, so stick with me on this one. How many times have you been trying your best to get things done and procrastination sets in? Suddenly you're on YouTube, you're going down a Wikipedia hole, or, and this is my main one, searching for the perfect song before you even start thinking about what you should do. For me, I usually turn to the Lo-Fi Girl or some other Lo-Fi mix on YouTube, but recently I've been using Pool Suite FM. Pool Suite FM is this totally over-designed, super cool 80s themed radio station that immediately transports you to that endless poolside summer, playing a variation of pop, light rock and lo-fi tracks, all created from SoundCloud and YouTube streams. It's all backed up with visuals from 80s infomercials too, and it's kind of wild. The iPad app is currently, well, non-existent. If you download it, you get a scaled up iPhone version with no icon, which is kind of horrifying. So I'd recommend loading it up on Safari and enjoying the amazing experience there. I think I could probably talk about how cool this is for days, but you get a whole operating system dubbed Pool OS that harkens back to the Windows 3 era. And it's a lot of fun. You can select radio stations, browse mixtapes, check out their Instagram, all in these little separate windows. It's really silly, but I like it and it really shows off what they're trying to achieve. All of that aside, of course, having music you only listen to while you're working can also help you focus. As mentioned in the book, Make Time, which is well worth reading if you want to learn about being productive, you can laser your focus with a work-only playlist, which acts as a cue to get you into work mode. I really, really hope they bring the full browser app to the iPad one day because it's such a wonderful experience, but for now you'll have to make do with the scaled up iPhone app or the browser mode. Next up is an app that I use to start pretty much every single of my working days. It's Microsoft To Do. Now there's loads of list making apps out there and some of them have features way beyond what To Do has to offer. But for me, To Do rose to become my favorite of all of those apps. And it's for a really simple reason. It's so simple. Open it up, add things to your list and then tick them off as you go. Making lists, of course, is nothing new, but I do love the way To-Do keeps everything really clear. There's very few menus and settings, and it allows you to focus on your task at hand. Some little features I do like, though, are being able to add steps to tasks, which adds a little bit more depth to things, and being able to share a list with someone else who can edit it in real time. For example, Ben and I use Microsoft To-Do to keep on top of podcast topics. I also really like how it's cross-platform. I'm still working across Windows, Mac, iPad, iPhone, and anything else when it comes to work, so having my to-do list follow me around regardless of what platform I'm on is ideal. And all of to-do's apps are excellent across the board. There are loads of features that I haven't gone into here, but if you're looking for a well-designed, free, and simple list maker, to-do is really awesome. I've spoken a lot on this channel about my favorite note-taking apps for iPad, so I'll link that video below if you want to learn a bit more about them. But in a productivity sense, I think Notability is possibly the best note-taker that I've tried. You've most likely seen Notability hanging around on the App Store or in Apple adverts, and for good reason, it's possibly the richest way to take, edit, and organize notes. And in many ways, it really is the de facto choice. But there's two main reasons it's the best in a productivity sense for me. One is the voice recorder that's built into each note you start. Not only does this allow you to record a lecture or class, but when you play it back, it also shows you the notes you took at that time, which is just so awesome. And secondly, Notability has the best tuning, for lack of a better word, with the Apple Pencil. This is so close to a pen and paper feeling that you can almost forget you're using an iPad. They've really nailed the experience here and I'm a huge fan of it. 
On top of that, I really like the infinite scroll feature you get on each note. The handwriting to text tool is pretty fantastic and note organization is nice and easy thanks to simple section layouts. There's even optional extras like maths conversions, themes and completely different notebooks, although they are sadly hidden behind a paywall. If you are looking for a really decent note taker on the iPad, then you really can't go wrong here. If you are planning on doing a lot of note taking or drawing on the iPad, then a screen protector is probably something you're going to want to pick up. For a while now, I've been using a Paperlike one, and I'm really happy to tell you that they are today's video sponsor. Paperlike is a screen protector for the iPad that's been created to really make it feel like you're writing, sketching, or doodling on paper. The textured surface of Paperlike grips the Apple Pencil for a much more natural feeling, making you more accurate with your inputs, all while getting rid of the unnatural feeling of drawing on glass. Each pack comes with two Paperlike screen protectors and a simple to follow easy application kit. My favorite part about the whole thing though is the lovely matte finish and the way it pretty much removes all fingerprints from the screen. If you do love taking notes, drawing, or just hate fingerprints getting on your iPad, then be sure to check them out in the link below. And thanks again to Paperlike for sponsoring this video. Of all the apps I'm listing in this video, I actually think Trello is the one I've been using the longest to help organize myself. Trello is like a pin board for your thoughts. It lets you keep track of multiple things while giving you a bird's eye view of everything you want to do. I like it a lot and I've used it mainly to keep track of all of my video ideas for this channel. I've got a list for main ideas, current videos in productions, and then there's an uploaded list too. The great thing about Trello is each entry you make is its own entire thing. You can open each item up and add descriptions, comments, attach files, make checklists, and even make your own automations, which is a really powerful feature. I only have one automation which I use, which is called Uploaded, which ticks everything off in the list and moves the card to the uploaded column, signaling that a video is completely done. There's a wealth of depth here and you can really turn it into a productivity powerhouse if you use it as a team. I do use it alone though, so I've got lists for all sorts of things that crop up as a single content creator. Instagram ideas, equipment upgrades I'm thinking of making, sponsors I want to deal with, office upgrade thoughts, and even live stream ideas. My entire thought process for the channel pretty much sits in here and it's often where I go to start a project. For this next app, I'm not going to dive massively into it because it's not the most exciting to talk about, but what I will say is Google Workspace is one of the best places to go if you're looking for an alternative to the Microsoft Office suite or Apple's slew of Office-like programs. Google Docs, Sheets, Hangouts, Gmail, Slides, and more all fall into this suite of apps, and I've been using them pretty much since I started this channel. I write all of my scripts on Google Docs, I keep all of my emails in Gmail, and I use a combination of all the others just to help me keep on top of my work. As ever, one of the biggest features that I love about the Google Workspace is the cloud-first nature of it. I can work on these apps wherever I am on whatever device I like, all I need is an internet connection and I can continue a vast portion of what I do. That's hugely important to me because I don't have any set methods for work, and especially for writing scripts, I'll often write small ideas or paragraphs when they hit me, so having decent apps that are synced and work across all devices is just so important. I don't think any video without the word productivity in its title doesn't include a mention of Notion somewhere, so here it is. My next app on the list is Notion. And look, I don't want to lie to you, I'm really new to Notion, so my understanding of it is very limited right now. So rather than show you my really simple basic setup, I'll tell you why I'm looking at getting into it. One of the things I'm facing right now is I'm using four or five or six different apps to direct everything I do here on YouTube. And for the most part, that's fine, I've made it work. But from what I can see online, if your understanding of Notion is good enough, you can consolidate all of that process from scripting to task management to scheduling all into one place and Notion appears to be the place to do it. So while I can't give you any advice or tips on it just yet, what I will say is if you're in a similar boat to me, then this app is probably worth a look in. You can pretty much make it do what you want, you just need the time and understanding to do so. Okay, so before wrapping this video up, I wanted to give some honorable mentions. These are a few apps that I also use a huge amount to get work done, but they might not be for everybody, so here goes. 
Lightroom. If you're into photography, you've got to give Lightroom on iPad a go. It's a truly wonderful photo editing experience and it's one of my absolute favorite uses for the iPad. I actually just released my own Byte Review preset pack too, so if you want to check that out, I'll link it below. Secondly, if you are an artist, then you need to give Procreate a try. Procreate is the app for artists on iPad. It's simple to understand, but it has endless depth to it that artists new and old will enjoy. And it's another fantastic showcase for the Apple Pencil. Thirdly, LumaFusion. If you're planning on editing any video on the iPad at all, then LumaFusion is the closest you're going to get to a desktop level application. But don't let that fool you. This is a powerful editor made even more so by the M1 chip inside the new iPad Pros. I've edited entire videos on here in 4K and it hasn't broken a sweat. And finally, this isn't really an app, but just something I like to do. If you live in the UK like I do, then WhatsApp is our messenger of choice. And sadly, there is no iPad app for it. However, you can access it online through a browser. So something I like to do is to add the web page to my home screen so it shows up as its own app. This is great if you need to send a few quick messages to someone or if you're keeping tabs on lots of conversations. It's not perfect by a long shot. There's loads of annoying quirks with the browser version of WhatsApp, but it does work and this is pretty much the only way to access it on the iPad. So that just about rounds up all of the apps I use for getting stuff done on my iPad. More than ever though, I like to hear what you're using. So if there's any apps you think I should check out or anything you think is really missing from this list, then let me know in the comments below. And if you know a good place to start with Notion, then let me know that too. Anyway, leave a like on the way out. That would be massive. And I will see you all in the next one.